this great insight as to who we are in him. While you're turning to Judges chapter 11, I want to thank God for those of you that came out on Friday night in numbers and called on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I want you to know that he heard your prayer and that the manifestation is in progress. Amen, somebody. Good God Almighty. We are praying for the brethren around the world. And when we say brethren, we use that word not in the biblical sense, but context, but in a unisex form, we are praying for the people at large in the world, crisis and catastrophe everywhere, and especially in California, we have to pray for them today before we leave, Texas, that is, thank you, because they are dealing flooding that has stolen homes and life earning so many families are devastated but in the midst of the chaos there's a bomb in Gilead oh hallelujah hallelujah and so we want to ask God that while we are praying for showers of blessing that he will hold off the showers of terror bring aid to those that are hurting and certainly need divine intervention. So many other catastrophes and tragedies that we didn't mention this morning. And there are those of you even here today who are asking for your body. Some are experiencing turbulent times in the family. But I believe in God for you today. We release deliverance into your situation and trust that God will bring about a change in your life. I feel a change even here today. <clears throat> I feel a change right here today. It is Judges chapter 11 <clears throat> and uh, Judges chapter 11 verse 1 through 11 29 32 and 33 Genesis Judges chapter 11 verse 1 through 11 29 32 and 33 Oh spirit of the living God spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power that's evident with us right now. Oh, glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Invite you then to stand with us as we hear the conclusion of this message. I'm not the problem. I'm the solution. Jephthah, the Gideonite, Gideonite, was a mighty warrior. His father's name was Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get an inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of a strange woman. Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tub, where a group of adventurers gathered around him and followed him. Some would say that these were hoodlums, that these were bandits. Verse 4. And sometimes later, when the Ammonites made war on Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tub. 
incumbent said they be our commander so we can fight the Ammonites. Jephthah said to them, didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, okay, nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Ammonites and you will be our head over all who live in Gilead. Jephthah answered, suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Gilead replied, the Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and commander over them and he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Verse 29, then the spirit of the Lord, oh my God, came upon Jephthah. Then Jephthah went out over to fight the Ammonites and the Lord gave them into his hands. He devastated 20 towns from Aurora to the vicinity of Minith as far as Abel Karami. Thus, Israel subdued Ammon. Somebody ought to say amen. We'll give an opportunity to those that are on the outside to come on in. And uh, we decree and declare that the word of the Lord is already blessed. Glory be to God. The word of God is sharp and powerful. The Bible says sharper than any two-edged sword. And I pray, Lord, that your word will go out today to accomplish that which you have decreed it to accomplish. We decree that no weapons that are formed against the children of God shall prosper. We decree that the word of God is established in heaven and that the eyes of God watches over your word to perform it. So in the name of Jesus today, to those that look to you for deliverance, I pray that deliverance will come sooner than they can think. And I ask you, God, in this house today, that you will accomplish what you said you would do. Lord, have your way right now. We are putting notice on every force that is untied, God, today, and to decree that your days are numbered and that you will not, though you have tried, that you will not ruin the purpose of God for our lives. Somebody ought to put your hands together and clap them like they were on fire. You may not believe me, but just like how your birth was not a mistake, you are not here today by mistake. You may not have even wanted to be here today, but God intended for you to be here, for there is deliverance in your path. Somebody say amen. One more time, identify and locate a praise partner today by the shaking of their hands. Hallelujah to God. Release some of that fire that's on you. And by the shaking of their hands, tell them I don't know what the problem is. But I got to tell you, I'm not the problem. I'm the solution. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Generally recognized and celebrated as an internationally renowned priest, respected professor, beloved pastor, and acclaimed author of over 40 books, Henry Joseph Nowin is believed by some to be one of the most ins inspirational voices that lends clarity and transparency 
to the subject of the believer's spiritual life. Regarded as his greatest legacy to the global Christian community, the book entitled Life of the Beloved, Spiritual Living in a Secular World, undoubtedly has become by far one of my top ten most favorite books. Written four years before his death in 1996, Life of the Beloved is not only simplistically enlightening, it is a compelling testimonial and a personal witness to the fact that as children of God, all of us, all of us, regardless of our differences, are God's beloved, specifically designed, chosen, and favored by God penned with a type of easy to understand pragmatic simplicity with unmistakable uh, artistry uh, uh, we find then that the writer the author points out that each of us in our own matchless individuality and uniqueness are unequivocally God's beloved the riveting motif to the sig or, or the signature point of emphasis articulates that despite uh, the variations, the physical dissimilarities, or the cultural differentials between us, each of us matters to God. We matter to God more than you can ever deem, dream, or imagine. In dealing then with the compendium of challenges that and complications that often bombard and entangle the life of the believer, J.M. Nowen uh, argues, and I quote, he says, I have come to the realization that the greatest trap in life is not success, popularity, or power, but self-rejection. When we have come to believe in the voices that call us worthless and unlovable, then success, popularity, and power are easily perceived as attractive solutions. The real trap, however, he said, is rejection. As soon as someone accuses me or criticizes me, as soon as I am rejected, left alone, or abandoned, I find myself thinking, well, that proves that once again I am nobody. My dark side says I'm no good. I deserve to be pushed aside, rejected, forgotten, and abandoned. Self-rejection, he concludes, is the greatest enemy of the spiritual life because it contradicts the sacred voices, that voice that calls us the beloved. Being the beloved constitutes the core truth of our existence, end of quote. It is interesting here that above the raw, uh, unbridled lust and passion for personal aggrandizement, success, popularity, affluence, influence, and supremacy, self-rejection is classified as perhaps the greatest enemy of the spiritual life. Despite, uh, uh, despite the veracity, the greed, and the gluttony for material indulgence, now when pontificates that self-rejection is one of the most annihilating assault weapons you and I could ever face. He renders uh, it, uh, uh, he, rend he renders it uh, uh, quote unquote, the greatest enemy because self-rejection is no more than a self-imposed, self-inflicted, devious act of first degree assault against your own self. Self-rejection, brothers and sisters, is a brutish, insidious offense, one where the emotionally wounded, broken individual turns against himself, uh, inflicting further damages and punishment upon himself through unjust criticism, blame, name-calling, and condemnation. I have to concur then that now and uh, that it, it is the greatest enemy because of one thing. It is self 
assassination, uh, uh, self-rejection. It is uh, a recurring emotional conflict. It is a vicious internal battle against myself. And what's even worse, it is a fundamental violation of God's infallible decrees and divine purpose for my life. Self-rejection, which typically is equivalent to self-hate, uh, completely subverts, refutes, refutes uh, contradict, and uh, somehow dismantle uh, or disannul the credibility of one's identity. In other words, brothers and sisters, self-rejection is a defiant conviction which falsifies and misrepresents your true identity by saying you are not really who God created you to be. I wonder even I would even dare to say that to doubt your ability to question your significance to degrade devalue or reduce your self image uh, uh, down to the level of a worthless nobody is a flagrant indictment against Jehovah Elohim the impeccable designer and creator of all I wonder are you here today to understand to under appraise your self worth because you don't think you measure up to the world's value system is to act as if your life was a botched scientific experiment that went terribly wrong. When you find yourself beating upon yourself for not fitting in the perfect mold of everybody else, in essence, you are telling the creator that he produced a substandard, defective product, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, a worthless, inadequate misfit that serves no legitimate purpose to the world. I've learned over the years that what people say about me is just empty, meaningless uh, uh, ridicule. It, they are words without weight, words without substance, and without value. Uh, the supreme determinant lies in what I choose to believe about myself. Talk to me, somebody. Say I'm this, that, or the other, but as long as I know who I am, your false innuendos and distorted Suppositions are simply meaningless absurdities. Somebody say amen. Regardless what I'm lacking, the joy of redemption is having God's guaranteed assurance of acceptance. Say amen, somebody. He doesn't choose to accept me and to love me because of what I look like. And if he did, then he would have no choice because I am. I'm the reflection of God. Uh, come on and say amen somebody. Now it's one thing to be around some negativistic dream killer who keeps hammering it in your head that you are no good. It's another thing however when you are the one swinging the hammer hallelujah to God looking in the mirror talking about look at you. You're so pitiful. No one wonder nobody likes you. This is a conversation that you're having with you and you alone. You don't even deserve to live. You go on telling yourself. When it's somebody else saying it, that's cantankerous. That's inflammatory. That is abusive. But when the words of denigration, inferiority, condemnation, and self-hate is being propagated and pounded over and over again in your head from your own lips, that right there is silence. Psychotic. Are you hearing me, somebody? It is one thing to have somebody disrespect and degrade you, but to repeatedly put yourself 
down when you are disappointed or disgusted with yourself is a vicious, senseless act of sabotage against your own self-dignity and pride. Is anybody hearing me today? Hallelujah to God. Never you try to beat up on yourself because of who God created you to be. Because of your imperfections, because of your inadequacies, because of your failure. Uh, you got to brush yourself off even when you fall and tell yourself, I'll try again. Come on and say amen. This is why J.M. Now when uh, calls rejection a trap, uh, 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 a divisive trap that restrains and holds us back in a destructive pattern. Because if you don't know who you are, like a broken winged bird, you are going to find uh, uh, yourself flattering about, uh, unable to rise to your fullest potential. Anytime you give in, you surrender or capitulate to the notion that because of your impediment or your imperfection that your life has no value or purpose, you are actually casting a dark spell over your future. Somebody talk to me. You are imposing curses upon your life when you accept and embrace demeaning uh, scornful thoughts about yourself. You are speaking death and and destruction to your highest potentials and aspirations. You are actually killing yourself because a man, no matter how endowed he may be, seldom rises above who or what he perceives himself to be. I'm preaching and you don't even know it. Unconsciously, you will always live and act like the sort of person you consider Perceive yourself to be. Uh, therefore, you've got to cultivate thoughts uh, that is going to help to build and to produce a stronger and better you. Uh, say amen, somebody. Uh, negative descriptions and negative name callings and negative bashing of yourself uh, ruins your strongest potential. Uh, say amen, somebody. Uh, but when you come to real Realize that you are not your weaknesses when you come to realize that despite what is in the bloodline that I have my own identity in God uh, then you don't surrender or sub su subjugate yourself to the tyranny of self rejection somebody better talk to me marching under the guidance and supervision of one of the greatest leaders that ever lived, uh, accompanied by the Shekinah presence uh, of the Almighty. Moses' generation all perished in the wilderness, uh, not for lack of ability uh, or adequate support, uh, but because of what they perceived themselves to be, uh, armed and equipped by the invincible power of God, uh, instead of approaching their enemy enemies with unstoppable uh, 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 with the uh, as the unstoppable conqueror that they were uh, ironically Moses his generation never walked on the high road of destiny uh, because in the face of giants uh, they saw themselves as grasshoppers uh, oh God have mercy uh, tell your neighbor it's time to change your specs uh, uh, come on here somebody uh, it's time to change your specs. Come on on how you see yourself. Though they were endowed with incomprehensible capabilities, they never became giant killers because in the wake of threatening conditions, they saw themselves as frail, feeble, fragile, 
are docile insects uh, that didn't stand a chance against the opposing forces. I come to tell somebody today that grasshopper mentality will never rise to be conquerors. You will never conquer your enemy with a grasshopper mentality. You will never stand on top to conquer, to dominate and to lead, to possess the unthinkable. If you think that you can't, it is time for you to experience a revolution in your concept and perception of who you are. Brothers and sisters, hear me today. Strategically, God had placed the enemy right in the palm of their hands. But because of their deluded view of their own self-image, they wondered about in desolation without ever possessing their portion in life. Say amen, somebody. I come to tell you that I strongly believe that a Amidst the adversities that we experience, that nobody can stop you but you. Come on and say yes. That when you believe that you can, like a bomber, you will. Somebody say yes. Why? Because no matter how endowed a man may be, he cannot rise above who or what he perceives himself to be. Say amen. This is why when Jeremiah hallelujah declined the prophetic office by saying to God nay Lord for I am too young. I am but a child and I cannot speak. God quickly interrupted him. God intercepted that negative toxic language that he referred to himself. Come on somebody. I'm the Lord said unto him in Jeremiah 1 7 through 8 the Lord said Jerry do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you you shall go say amen somebody and all that I command you you shall speak do not be afraid of them for I am with you to deliver you. Hallelujah. God said to Jerry, like God is saying to us today, don't say it. Touch your neighbor, tell him, don't say it. What God was saying here, he said, don't allow such future wrecking confession to come out of your mouth. Don't release it in the atmosphere. Come on, somebody. You will corrode the ground. It may germinate and produce chaos in your life. Even if you think it or feel it, don't say it. Say what God says that you are. That I feel weak, but I'm strong. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, don't say it. If you ain't got nothing positive to say about yourself, shut your mouth and wait until your change comes. But don't speak words of curses over your life. Look at your neighbor and say, don't say it. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. There are a lot of things that I feel at times, but I'm not going to introduce it to the atmosphere. For there are demons and there are angels that are standing by waiting to catch my words in order to create the image I see of myself. Somebody say it. Yeah. Yeah. In essence, God was telling Jeremiah that in order to become who he was pre preordained to be, 
He had to change both his perception as well as his confession with regards to his true identity. God said, don't go negative. In other words, even though your current reality contradicts and betrays your prophetic destiny, don't say it. Don't confess it. Don't determine what's ahead of you based on what you're seeing in front of you right now. God said, you've got to change your perception because the outcome oftentimes is determined by your perception and your confession. I'm not talking about being deceitful and arrogant. I'm not talking about being so self-conceited. Hallelujah. That it's like you put blinders and you never admit that you have a problem. You act like you're the greatest thing since the Messiah. Hallelujah. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm saying to you, don't allow that maniacal spirit uh, to come upon you uh, where you label yourself uh, hallelujah as being nothing uh, and undone uh, it was Mark Twain the legendary American author uh, who said that the worst loneliness uh, is, is to not be comfortable with yourself uh, the reality is no matter what uh, amen obnoxious twisted distorted uh, opinions of praise or perspective someone else may have of you. You've got to recognize that your life is a precious, priceless, irreplaceable, unique stone in the mosaic of human existence. Talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. Amidst the defining the voices of the critics and the, uh, the deafening fault finders, you You've got to remain a poise. You've got to be confident and buoyant about who you are as opposed to what others perceive you to be. Oh, my God. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, their myopic opinion and perception of you. But as Ralph, uh, uh, as Ralph Ellison, uh, a man purpose, proposes, he says, when I discover uh, who I am, uh, I'll be free. Uh, you didn't hear me, somebody. Uh, I love what Ralph says. Uh, he says, when I discover uh, who I am, uh, I'll be free. Uh, you can't tie me up uh, to keep me bound. Uh, when I realize who I am, somebody shout, I know who I am. I know who I am. Like Henry J. M. Nowen reminds us, he says, the world tells us many lies about who we are. And you simply have to be realistic enough to remind yourself of this. Every time you feel hurt, every time you feel offended, every time you feel rejected, you have to dare to say to yourself, these feelings, strong as they may be are not telling the truth about myself. Come on, somebody. The truth is, even though I cannot feel it right now, I am the chosen child of God, precious in God's eyes, called the beloved from all eternity, and held safe in an everlasting belief. End of quote. They heard, they heard inflammatory insults. Uh, they uh, heard disdainful criticisms and scandalous accusations at him. They called him uh, the barefooted carpenter. Uh, they castigated and taunted him. Uh, hallelujah. A legend uh, that instead of a Messiah, uh, he was an unscrupulous son uh, of a 
Beelzebub. But that did a change of fact that in his presence, angel revered and worshipped him. The starry constellation bows before him. And at his very appearing, demons prostrate before him. Jesus never allowed his critics to affect him. Because in the midst of their fabricating, amen, concoctions and their false allegations and falsehoods. Jesus knew who he was and when you know without a doubt who you are, despite what others try to make of you, somebody shall nothing, I shall nothing moves you. Say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Call me Harry and I won't look at you. Call me Tony and I'll keep on walking. Call me Gonzalez and I won't even blink because that's not who I am. Come on somebody. I know who I am. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yeah. I wonder, I wonder, should I work today? Thought I feel tired, but I came to work today. I came to work one. One of the things I like most about Jephthah is uh, 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 although he grew up uh, as an unloved, unwanted, unwelcome uh, uh, a child, uh, uh, a reject, if you will, although they use all kinds of scornful, derogatory slogans uh, and idioms to mortify and degrade him, uh, Jephthah never really wasted time or energy uh, trying to somehow counterattack uh, or contend uh, with his offenders, uh, particularly because deep down uh, on the inside, Jephthah knew who he was uh, uh, without ever taking uh, the time out to get to know him. Uh, they ganged up on him, his brothers, you see, uh, and they violently drove him out uh, of the house deep into exile. Somebody say yes. Hallelujah. Somebody. They told him, sir, you're not welcome here because you are not of our type. You are not for our quality. Like a broken down, dilapidated house in an upscale neighborhood. They say you're bringing our name down and you got to get out of town. They mockingly refer to him as uh, the son of a harlot. Uh, but beyond the embarrassment and the indignity, uh, he knew that his real identity uh, was the key to his destiny. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, I believe they purposefully didn't call him Jephthah uh, because if they had done that, uh, they would have been forced to recognize uh, that he was no ordinary young man. Uh, talk to me somebody if they called him by his name he had been they'd been forced to recognize that he was gifted beyond comprehension oh come on and talk to me somebody come on and talk to me somebody oh god i feel you here if they had called him by his name they would have to be, would have been forced to recognize that despite the circumstantial circumstances surrounding his conception. Instead of the black sheep of the family, they would have known that he was the chosen one. Come on and say amen, somebody. Instead of him being treated like a problem to get rid of, they would have known he would, amen, he 
would one day turn out to be the solution to some uh, impending disaster. Oh, I come to talk to you here today. I come to talk to somebody. If they had bothered to use this proper identity, they would have known that his very name is indicative of someone that is exceptional. Because etymologically speaking, the name Jephthah means opener. The name Jephthah means the breaker. Oh, come on somebody. Come on somebody. Hallelujah to God. You understand that you are not dealing with an ordinary man. When you compound the name together, it means deliverer. Oh my God, somebody say amen. They thought he was the son of a harlot, but in fact he was a deliverer. He was an opener. Uh, talk to me, somebody. Uh, deep in the core uh, of his very life. Uh, hallelujah. In the core uh, of his very being. Uh, oh, talk to me, somebody. Uh, 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 lies this uh, innate ability uh, to unlock mysteries uh, and to create breakthrough. Uh, that's who he was. Uh, when or what? Uh, no one else had the ability to to penetrate or to undo when Jephthah show up the power amen the power to make unfathomable breakthrough a reality was immediately unleashed oh God have mercy I come to tell somebody that Jephthah carried an anointing of the breaker yeah yeah Get me back there. Get me back there. Hallelujah to God. Uh, he, his name, his name, his name is no ordinary name. No ordinary name for it is, it was prophetic of who he would turn out to be. He was an opener where there were closed doors, where there were there seems to be no way out or no way in. Hallelujah to God. He carries an anointing that when he shows up without a locksmith or a lock and key he had the ability to open things. Oh come on and say amen somebody. Hallelujah to God. When there were wild beasts that roamed the neighborhood and nobody could control. He had the power to break the spirit of the beast. That's who he was. Now if you've, if you've always been made to feel as if your life doesn't really matter, this should serve as a great consolation because somehow it seemed like God, I feel like killing it today. It seems like you don't even hear me, somebody. It seemed like God always allows those who are often considered the nobodies to shine like a midnight star. Yeah, yeah. The one that nobody ever see the good in are often the very ones God chooses to make the greatest impact when the world needs a hero. <laughs> Touch somebody and tell them there's a hero in you. <laughs> oh my God, that is the reason why, Tony, when your mind is befuddled <laughs> with feelings of inadequacies and failure, <laughs> you cannot count yourself out <laughs> or write yourself off <laughs> because when necessity demands Man's it. If God often reaches way down in the bottom of the reject pile to select a no nonsense, no name commoner to unveil and demonstrate the wonders and mysteries of his power. Preach, preacher. You may never stand on the platform to receive the prestigious accolades and applause as the valid Victorian. You may never be considered among the uh, amen uh, uh, among the list of the top 10 most likely to succeed uh, your face may never grace the front cover of Forbes magazine uh, but I've come to tell somebody uh, that despite what they think of you there is something uh, amen buried deep on the inside uh, and no sooner sooner or later 
somebody will have to recognize that you are one of a kind. Believe it or not, you have within you the very DNA, the capacity of ch to change the world. You may appear to some as insignificant and important, but in reality, you are a rare commodity reserved for God's divine intent. Preach, preacher. People have a tendency to mislabel and mistreat you, not knowing the, that you could be the key to their greatest breakthrough in their lives. But touch somebody and tell them, I'm not the problem, honey, I'm the solution. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody say, yeah. Jephthah has now become an object of scorn, desertion, and rejection. He is forcefully driven out because somebody never took the time out to look beyond the scandalous stigmas to discover the unparalleled phenomenon he is becoming. Because of his background, he was considered a letdown. Oh my God, what they didn't know was that by God's design, Jephthah would soon become the talk of the town. Say amen somebody. Hear me today. You're on the bottom now. But I come to tell you that God is about to raise you up. Hallelujah. And all those who are now looking down in contempt and disgrace, disdain will soon look up in amazement at what God has done with the riffraff. They mistake designated you to be. I feel like preaching here somebody to tell you that this is where I join with the South African lyricist to say look at me. I am a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? I know who I am. Touch your neighbor and tell him you ain't got a single clue who I am. Touch somebody looking at you funny like they smell summer and tell them you ain't got a clue who's sitting next to you. Oh, you know that I saw. I feel you here, Jesus. I feel you here, Lord. Oh, God, have mercy. Hallelujah, somebody. Failure to acknowledge Jephthah's indispensable value. They drove him into desertion isolation and obscurity totally oblivious to the fact that it was God's opportunity to enlist Jephthah into boot camp to, try to be trained and developed for his assignment come on here somebody come on here somebody instead of always bickering and complaining over the unjust treatment of others sometimes you ought to be grateful for the brutality and the cruelty of your abusers. Somebody say yes. You ought to thank God for your accusers, for your oppressors, because what we refer to as calamity and misfortune is often deliberate circumstances designed by God to shape and mold and to fashion us to prepare us for the destiny he has reserved for us. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. You've got to understand. You've got to understand. You've got to understand I'm preaching fast. You've got to understand that the, the rejection and subsequent separation from his brothers was the best thing that could ever happen to him because it means God it was the means God employed to equip and expose him to a greater level of divine enablement come on somebody is it just me every now and then you become claustrophobic and you want to break out hallelujah God says like 
gift. He's using your enemies to cause you to break through and break out. It's not a breakdown. It's a breakout. Like a wild virus. I'm going to break out. I'm too big for this space. It's time for me to bust out. It's time for me to step into a new environment. A new territory. Come on somebody. This You can't grow in a barrel. You can't grow in a barrel of crabs. Come on somebody. I wish the barrel. I wish God would tilt the barrel. I wish. I wish. I wish God would tilt the barrel. And expose me. To a broader mindset. To a greater mentality. To a greater world. To my possibility. My potentiality. Help I'm stifling. I'm claustrophobic. The place I'm in is too small for me. The world is my playground. You better touch somebody and tell them I got to get up out of here. Yeah. Lord Jesus. God Almighty. Anybody talking to me here? Uh, we are constantly focusing on what people are doing to us. Hallelujah. What you don't under, you fail to understand. It's not what they're doing to you. It's what they're doing for you. Oh, come on and shout amen, somebody. You've got to understand that the rejection, the subsequent separation, was for God to equip and expose him to a greater level of divine enablement. There is a profound sense in which I'm able to rejoice in the face of malicious maladies and adversities because I understand that iniquity, indignity, wickedness, atrocities, injustices are specific tools God uses to develop resistance, resilience, rectitude and fortitude in the life of the believer. Talk to me somebody when I face unbeatable letdowns and rejection like Jephthah. I can walk away with my dignity being cognizant that in spite of it all, I'm being, hallelujah, I'm being led to a higher dimension of amazing grace. Say amen, somebody. Look at your neighbor. Tell them this is not the end, baby. This is the beginning. This is why the very sentiment, this is the very sentiment that David echoed in Psalms 41 and verse 11. Here is what David says. He says, by this I know that you have favored me. Why? Because you have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me me. Shout amen somebody. I want you to come, come, come. Come and see it now because I got to bring it close home. Lord, I feel you here. Like a worthless castaway without any retaliatory reaction. Jephthah walks away and ended up in a place called Tob. said uh, ended up in a place called Tub. Historians reported that the land of Tub served as an asylum or a place of refuge for runaway fugitives and outlawed bandits. Cuscatabranda. I feel God here. If you had no apparent purpose or prospect, if you were considered an outcast, vile men written off by society, chances are you would end up in a place called 
bathtub. This was no place for a mighty man whose life was marked and italicized by purpose. But I will submit to you this morning that when you find yourself in the most hopeless, amen, despairing conditions of life, that's where God unveils and exposes the dormant treasure in you. Come on and say amen somebody. Hallelujah to God. If you remain in the house of wickedness, you will never grow. For you are being limited. You need to breathe the fresh air, the oxygen, hallelujah, of life and productivity. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. God sent him to the right place because out there in Tob, hallelujah, there were all rejects. Oh, come on, somebody. Ain't nobody criticizing nobody. Nobody felt above anybody. Hallelujah, they were all rejects. Oh, I feel like preaching here today. I've got to tell you this, that when you have been purposefully, you've been purposefully abandoned, left to float in a raging sea without a paddle, without moral support, without financial assistance, without a lifeline, or a single voice of encouragement, that's what awakens and activates the inner ability in you. That's what drives and pushes you to become extraordinary. When they drop you and leave you, that's what transforms you into a person of substance and significance. When you have been dropped, kicked to the curb, left hopelessly to suffer a slow, painful death. That's when the fighter in you arise, get up, arise to turn a calamitous situation into a thing of admiration. Somebody say amen. Somehow, somehow, while among his brothers in his own house. Watch this. The safety zone. He never found the impetus, the humph. He never found that drive, the gravitas to fight back. Uh, there were too many of them, and they were on the same side. And it was like he was in, stacked against him and uh, it was as if he was in the boxing ring. And in this corner stands the lightweight, the lightweight son of a harlot. Uh, and over here in this corner stands the heavyweight tag team <laughs> champions of the world. He already, before they ring the bell, it looked like he stands no chance. And the thing about Jephthah is that I don't care what you call that boy. That boy got integrity. He ain't fighting his brothers, though his brothers are willing not just to fight him, but to kill him. Come on and talk to me, somebody. Uh, they, they made a mistake and called a family conference without inviting him and made a declaration that he's got to go and they kicked him out but that was the best thing that could have ever happened in the life of Jephthah because God wanted to teach Jephthah to be a fighter come on and say amen somebody I come to tell you honey that you've been sitting for too long it's time to fight for your life fight for who you are Fight for what you can be. It's time to arise. Tell somebody, fight. Fight the good fight of faith. I come to tell somebody, can I preach in here this morning to tell you that when you are forced to stand alone without any chance of survival, that's when the power of the warrior in you is unleashed. And that's what, amen, inadvertently produces the champion in you. There comes a time when you gotta take the bull by the horn and say if I win or I lose I'm gonna fight to the finish shut him in somebody 
Look at your neighbor and tell them, fight to the finish. You got to become a fighter if you're going to survive. In fact, I feel, I feel, I feel inspired today. Sometimes we don't testify. And sometimes folk look at us. Hallelujah to God. And we're looking real good. And in fact, too good. Because they don't know your story. Come here. Touch it for me. Come here. Touch it for me. Touch it for me. Come and You come here. Stand right there. I'm going to tell on her because she can't get mad with me. And if she does, I don't care. I got to deliver somebody. Stand right there. You see, you've got to understand, I've been around here now for nearly 22 years. Hallelujah. 21 years ago when I met her, the girl was near the poverty line. Are you hearing me, somebody? 21 years ago when I met her, the girl was one step of being kicked out of her apartment. 21 years ago, she won't tell it, I'll tell it. When I met her, hardly had any furniture in the house, whether to sleep on or sit on. 21 years ago when I met her, she and her little son didn't have enough money to buy groceries for she and her son. Oh my God, have mercy. Oh, but it became, it taught, taught her to be a fighter. She had left England to come here. Hallelujah to God. Stayed with some friends or relatives. Hallelujah for a little while. And then she had to step out on her own. Hallelujah. You see, some of you create hallelujah the monsters that some of our family members are because you let them stay too long. Hallelujah to God. You let them stay for a little while until they can stand on their own two feet. And sometimes that means as soon as you get a job, you are not going to stay in my house, eat up my food. Hallelujah to God. And become a no good somebody that don't pay no rent. I'm not training you to become, a, hallelujah, a warrior. So she had to go. But look at me here, somebody kept coming to church and nobody knew what she was dealing with. Hallelujah, became a fighter. It made her a fighter. I don't know if she had the bachelor's when she came here. She had the bachelor's, but Lord, how mercy she knew that the bachelor's would only keep her in a position of misery. So she kept going for the masters. Hallelujah. Ain't got no food on the table, but going for the masters. Oh, somebody talk to me up in here. Going after the masters. You know why? Because she saw how her future, where she is today. She saw it 21 years ago. Somebody better talk to me. Got the bachelor's got the masters but she thought that education would be her weapon against poverty so she fought the good fight of faith and went on for the masters got the masters but today here she is a principal in this city over high school and walking her way one step away from her PhD tell somebody you gotta fight tell somebody Somebody, you gotta fight. Fight for it. I'm better than this. Fight for it. I belong over there. Fight for this. It's in you. The power to achieve, to be, to is in you. Yeah, yeah she would. She wouldn't give up. Bring me another one. She wouldn't give up. Hallelujah to God. And, to, and because she didn't give up, if she doesn't have food on her table today, it's not because she has no money to buy it. It's because she chose not to. Somebody talk to me here. Somebody has been banished in a lonely, God-forsaken place called Tub. But I'm here to remind you that champions are not made in luxuriously green, pristine pastures of comfort and contentment champions
Friends, are made when you determine that it's a, that it's the, that that fighting is the only way that you can become a winner, and most importantly, that your life is worth fighting for. Can I tell somebody that champions are made when you face the perils of life's battles with fearless faith, unflinching, resilient courage, and an emboldened attitude that says no matter what you do to me I refuse to let it hinder me touch somebody real quick and tell them my struggles has made me a candidate for promotion and elevation somebody shout yes somebody shout yes shout no matter what no matter what no matter what you do to me, I refuse to let it hinder me. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. By the power of Yeshua HaMashiach, I decree and declare that make the God who calls you his beloved use the place where you are as a springboard to promotion and elevation. May God use the desolate conditions in which you are currently living in to catapult and propel you to a place of unparalleled strength and power. May your land of Tob, that place of desertion and desolation, bring you in shady green pristine pastures uh, of preeminence and predominance. Uh, may Jehovah El Shaddai uh, raise you up uh, from the dung hills of poverty and insecurity uh, to establish your feet uh, on the mountain peaks uh, of prosperity and notoriety. Uh, touch somebody real quick. Uh, pull on your neighbor uh, and tell them I'm being prepped uh, for another the dimension of divine favor. Favor doesn't mean sitting on your gluteus maximus waiting for an angel to leave heaven. Hallelujah to God to pay your bills. Favor find those who are hunting for opportunities and possibilities. Somebody shout yes. Tell your neighbor as hard as it is like Jephthah and boot camp. I'm being prepped for a greater dimension of favor. Touch your neighbor, tell him y'all ain't ready for this. You, you ain't ready for it. You're praying for favor. You're praying for the blessings of God. But you're not ready for it because you're not, you're not prepared. You, 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 you're, not, you're not prepared for what God has in store. You, you, you understand that what God intends to do, Jephthah, is to put you on top. Jeff, God's getting ready to hoist your flag. <laughs> Jeff, you don't understand that he's getting ready to put your name on a billboard. <laughs> but it all depends on what you're doing now. Come on here, somebody. You can't be sitting around here engaged in little chicken fights. No, no, no. You're getting ready to sit on top, man. And so it better I suffer and struggle right now on my way to success. Come on and talk to me, somebody. There are those who seem bound by the misconception that because they dropped you, uh, it's over for you. Oh, but in the realm of faith, I found out that one closed door often leads to even a greater open door. When folks walk out and turn their back, on you. It's only to make room for another group of individuals that are strategically coming to your life. Not to degrade or to denigrate but to celebrate and extraordin the extraordinary gift that you are. Say amen somebody. I feel right now to talk to somebody. Hallelujah to God. For the text said that a group of miss 
misfit, misplaced, misguided men who had been searching for direction and leadership that they flocked and latched on to Jephthah. Hallelujah to God. Yes, they did. Like a hook, like hook, line, and sinker. With reckless abandon, they yielded and submitted their lives and service to his command. Talk to me here, somebody. Hallelujah. Because they determined in their mind, hallelujah, that they were not, amen, going to remain in the same place that they were in. Talk to me, somebody. Ah, they flocked to Jephthah because they saw someone who represented a symbol of hope. Someone who could help them find their purpose in life. They didn't know his history. All they knew was that he possessed a rare ability to repair their wounded emotion, to restore their dignity, to recalibrate their confidence, to, re to enhance their capacity, and to influence their destiny. Talk to me, somebody. Isn't it amazing that the people of whom you're most familiar are oftentimes the very last ones to recognize your worth and value. Y'all ain't got to preach to me. I preach by myself. The individuals you pour your whole life into are often the last ones to acknowledge and embrace your exceptionality, your exceptional abilities. Now watch this here. His brother swindled him out of his inheritance and then ran him straight up out of town. But no sooner he arrived in tub, word got around that a new leader was in town. Oh my God, typically strangers are more eager to congratulate and celebrate who you are than who knows you best. They are often more complimentary and appreciative of what you have to offer than those whose very lives have been converted and transformed by the very anointing that you carry. Those closest to you may take your benignity, your generosity and kindness for granted. They may think, they may not think that you're worth holding on to. But I believe somewhere out there, there is a group of people who thinks that you are not just amazing, but you are to die for. Come on, somebody. Just because they kicked you out, the devil expect you to have a nervous breakdown. They're looking to see you roll up and curl up in a corner and die in depression. Oh my God. Because apparently you're not capable of making it without them. Oh, but I got news for you. I am mad for you ditching me because the minute you blocked my number was the moment I realized I'm too gifted to be held captive under your sadistic control. Somebody help me preach here. I really, really want to thank you for letting me go. Come on and say amen. Oh, I wish somebody would shout. I said shout for your release. Honey, you ain't got to be bitter. God wants to make you a fighter. God want to make you better. So he allowed people to drop you. He allowed folk to leave you. But I am mad at you. In fact, thank you. A thousand times, thank you. Thank your mama. Thank your daddy who brought you here. Because you drove, when you kicked me out, you drove me into my destiny. Somebody shout thank you. Tell somebody, in spite of it all, I will survive. Shake your neighbor's hands and tell them in spite of it all, I will survive it. I will. Yeah, 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 
you taught, you taught me that I was a fighter. <clears throat> uh, the rejection, the trouble. It reintroduced me to the greater me. This Katarianda. Talk to me, somebody. You have to see the paradox here. Because the very crisis, I'm about to close here. Yeah? Because the very crisis that was supposed to weaken and debilitate Jephthah became the catalyst God employed to transform him into the mighty, valiant warrior that he was. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. You sitting over there moping and crying, whining and complaining, and God is saying, shut up, I'm trying, hallelujah, to develop you into a man. I'm trying to get you to understand that you got something inside of you that your family don't have. Come on, somebody. You got something inside of you that your other co-workers don't have. I'm allowing them to push you because you're supposed to own it. You're supposed to supervise it. You're supposed to direct it. You are a leader, Jeff. Oh, my God, how much. Come on, somebody. If Jephthah didn't know it, hallelujah to God, he found out out in top that he wasn't just the son of a mistake. Oh, come on, somebody. He found out that within him, he was a leader. Come on, somebody. Come on, and the leader in you, the gift in you, the ability in you, hallelujah, is determined by who you attract. Oh, come on and say amen, somebody. Somebody. Hallelujah. Do you have the ability? Uh, do you have the glutinous magnetic ability elements in you uh, to draw a crowd? Oh, come on, somebody say amen. Come on, somebody. You know what the problem is? It's not that it's in, it's not in you. You're just in a tiny enclosed place. Oh my God. Sometimes I say to myself, I wish I was in Atlanta. I wish I was in Texas. I wish I was in a bigger city. I wish I had another platform. I'm bigger than this. Greater than where I am because of what is inside of me. Hallelujah to God. You can't control this terrible power. I preach in the desert if I have to. I preach to the crawling ant if, you, if I have to. I save the lizards out in the desert because of what God has placed inside of me. I want to tell you, Jephthah, that you got something in you that the world cannot stop. That's why Jesus told his disciples, it's in the upper room. You got to go to the upper room, and I'm going to pour out my spirit in you. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to give you another comforter. I'm going to give you the dunamis power. Come on, somebody. We got a lot of people that are full of themselves. But when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, when God pours the Holy Ghost inside of you, it is unstoppable power. It is resurrection power. It is power to destroy. It is power to deliver. It is power to cure. Somebody lift your hands and shout, I got too much power inside of me. To just, to just, to just curl up and die. When this place, after 21 years, no longer appreciates me, that's when my time is over here but never there because there's some place way out there you ain't gonna commit no suicide are you crazy you ain't looking in the mirror lately you got something that'll cause men to crash their cars just looking at it So when some nasty Negro that don't even know how to bathe himself 
turn the corner and go to some nasty dog. And then come around and treat you like dog food. Are you hearing me, somebody? And then says it's over. He's done with you. Girl, before he comes back, pack your bag. <laughs> Acting like you ain't got a God who can take care of you. Tell somebody, I'm not going to die here. I'm not going to die here. I'm going to make something out of the life that I've been given. Talk to me here, somebody. Talk to me here. Can I really bring it home now? Because the paradox is, is that the crisis was supposed to weaken, debilitate, and destroy Jephthah. Oh my God, have mercy. While he was in isolation, watch this somebody and the seclusion, he never lost hope. Come with me now, though he had legitimate reasons to feel angry, betrayed, and dejected, he never capitulated to give in or to uh, somehow to the maddening voices of rejection. He could have relapsed in apathy and self-pity. But what he had been through made a fighter out of him. Hallelujah, somebody. While the rest of them home were beating up their gums and their mouth, talking about Jephthah. Jephthah was out there learning how to use a sword. Hallelujah, somebody. He had his bow and his arrow. Come on and talk to me, somebody. And he used the tools that were available out there in tub. Tub was a rough place to be but you couldn't amen survive out in tub unless you become a fighter. I don't know how long Jephthah was out in tub but after a while that uh, the vicissitude of that environment created something inside of him. Instinctively he became a natural warrior. Come on, somebody. He ran the last time. He ran, amen, for the last time from his brothers. Hallelujah. But like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you better know I'll be back. I want you to tell somebody I'll be back. Tell somebody you ain't seen the best of me yet. Oh, come on, somebody. I may be in hiding, but I'm just preparing for the next round. Out. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Oh my God. Well out there in tub. Hallelujah. Tub are not for some puny, sleazy little amen jelly back believer. Hallelujah. We're in a rough world. The Bible said that you got to be careful because the enemy, your adversary, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It's a rough world out there. Hallelujah to God. But tell your neighbor, I'm preparing for the fight. Oh, the fight of a lifetime. I'm about to close here. Hallelujah. He could all. Hallelujah, somebody. He could have wallowed in self-pity. Hallelujah, he could all. But he didn't have a breakdown. Instead, here's what he did. He took these misguided, disadvantaged, misfit men and turned them into an indestructible fighting machine. So much so that when the nation of Israel fell under the oppressive yoke of the Ammonites, the elders of Gibeah, when they needed a strong leader to guide them to victory over the enemy, who did they call? when they couldn't find nobody from among themselves. Who did they call? Hallelujah, somebody. That son of a harlot, I feel like preaching. The very ones that expelled and disbarred him from the city 
came in search of Jephthah, not just to solicit his military expertise or to hire his elite armed force, but to exalt him as the commander and chief over the land of Gibeah. I come to tell somebody that you have within your DNA the power to change your environment. Somebody say yes. You have what the world is looking for. It's got to be developed. It's got to be developed. Somebody say yes. Have you noticed in the major that some people never seem to recognize or appreciate your importance and value until they are stuck in a rut? Until a crisis, a tsunami hit? Uh, they never taught, thought that. He would amount to anything. Because he didn't look like what he was going to be. If you look at my passport picture, when I left Jamaica 35 years ago to come here, you would be looking at me now in amazement because I didn't look nothing like what I was going to be today. Are you hearing me, somebody? Touch your neighbor ass and say, what you looking at? What you looking at? I know what you're looking at. I know what you're looking at. This is my now. You better wait for me then. Baby, listen, don't hang yesterday's picture. No. Come on. Somebody got to go home and redecorate the walls of your mind. Somebody got to go back and take some things out of the archives. Come on, somebody. You got to take them off the walls because you have images of yourself that doesn't represent you or who you are supposed to be. Talk to me here, somebody. Some people never recognize you. Hallelujah to God for who you are until they're in a crisis. I want you to talk to me here. Oh, watch this here because they never thought he'd amount to nothing. In fact, all he ever meant to them was an object of scorn. He was a problem they had to get rid of. I'm preaching real good, real fast until the Ammonites confiscated their peace and vowed to wipe them out. Oh my God, if you think that I'm that bad, wait until the Ammonites, hallelujah to God, step in and I'm not around. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody never appreciate a good wife or a good man. Hallelujah to God until you take him for everything that he has and walk away. Hallelujah. And who you thought was Mr. Life turn out to be the devil in disguise. Oh, look at somebody and tell them you're going to miss me. You, you, you you're going to miss me. Oh my God, keep your eyes on me. If you blink, you miss me because I'm going to be somebody. You better talk to me here, somebody. I'm going to be somebody one way or the other. God's going to turn this broke down life around. Say yes. Say yes. The, God, Bible, the Bible indicate that the Ammonites came in. Hallelujah. While Gibeah 
uh, Israel was living in sin. Uh, God now needed to raise up a judge. Uh, and the Ammonites came in uh, and began to terrorize the lives uh, of his brothers and the city. Uh, that's when they came chasing, uh, chasing after Jephthah. Uh, I'm telling you, they're going to come running after you. Uh, say yes. Uh, instead of the problem, uh, Jephthah is now viewed uh, as the only solution. Uh, that's when the reject uh, became the chosen. Uh, when trouble comes, uh, that's when Jephthah's life uh, went from zero to hero. Uh, when trouble comes, uh, every now and then, uh, Lord have mercy, uh, I feel the impulsive urge uh, to tell somebody, uh, listen to me, uh, don't be dissing me, uh, look down on me. Uh, in fact, be real careful uh, how you're treating me uh, because you never know uh, when you're going to be needing me uh, to be kinder to you uh, than you've been to me. Uh, touch somebody uh, and tell them go easy on me uh, because uh, you might just need me. Uh, tell them go easy, go easy. You might need me. Careful how you treat your Jephthahs. They don't look too good today. Their record, their reputation, you know, kind of tarnish. But sometimes that's where greatness comes, always seems to come up out of a mess 